We used to nickname this the Bates Motel. An elderly couple that owned this came up to our business and said, do you want to buy this property? This is the steps where the lady was seen in the long dress. Oh, my date the... for tonight. And this, this is where I'll be sleeping tonight. Yes, and the soldier was, he was supposedly a Confederate soldier who was really mortally wounded. And unfortunately, I believe he died. In so when, room? yes. Now these, I named them for them. I'm not sure whether they have an association with them at all, but uh, this one's named after the Elizabeth's mother, Sarah, kind of to pay homage to them because I believe they weren't really the queens of the household in their time. So I think now they be, they've become the queens of my household. This one I named for Elizabeth because it does have the neat old furniture in it. And you know, I got it and it looks out onto the garden. This one, I named for Stanley because it's the largest room and it's the coolest, you know, it's nice. He, I believe, is our protector. Do you want to go down to the basement? Oh, yeah, we yeah. have to see okay, the basement. Okay, then let's go down to the basement then. Wow, I love old basements. <laughs> yeah. What used to go on is that when this was called a public house yeah. and in those days, if somebody died in the winter time, sure. they would come, they would bring them to the public house and bury, bury them, them in the basement. Yeah, where it was cold. And, right. And then take them outside when Once the when, ground, when the ground thawed. Yeah. But they believe that maybe there's a strong possibility that the soldier might have been buried in here and then never taken back up and moved out there. They believe there's a possibility he could be here too. And I always find it strange that this is the only part that was not concreted in here. John was the old um, owner of the inn, who's one of the original owners, and he was an older man when uh, Sarah came to work for him. Sarah was one of the workers here, and he liked the young girls. He liked to chase them around. I believe he fell in love with Sarah, and they had a child named Elizabeth, and Sarah died shortly after she gave birth to Elizabeth. John's still here too, and because he feels that he's going to be judged harshly if he goes towards the light. He uh, accidentally, it was not on purpose, he pushed Elizabeth down the steps and she got internal bleeding and she died. He was a drinker, he liked to drink. Oh, okay. And he was an ornery old man and she was supposed to be upstairs at dark time when, you know, the bar people started coming in and she didn't want to go and he got mad at her and he pushed her down the steps. I believe she died within a few hours, yeah. So she died here in this place? She died in the basement. Hi, I'm Eric Anzalone. Welcome to What Matters Most. Today, we're back at Farmer's Hope Inn in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. And we're in a small dining room off the entryway. Apparently, this room is where John used to chase the servant girls from that door over through that door. That's why we're tucked away here in the corner. Alison Bachman first discovered numerology as a child. She studied it for a lifetime and began her professional career as a numerologist in 1999. Today, Allison is a professional numerologist, a Reiki master, author, lecturer, and regular guest of a monthly internet talk show, Journey into the Paranormal, with Joe, Joseph Tittle. Allison continues to study a wide range of metaphysical subjects, including divination tools, uh, holistic healing, chakras, meditation, qigong. Did I say that right? You said that perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Reiki, crystals, and mediumship. Welcome, Allison. Well, thank you, Eric. It's nice to see you. Yeah. Nice to be hanging out with you. Here in the Farmer's Hope Inn in, in Mannheim. Farmer's Hope Inn, yeah. Great energy in this place, right? Right. Good numbers, though? <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that, <laughs> yeah. So, Juno Jordan, who is a uh, highly respected numerolog uh, numerologist, um, he said, uh, your name is an autobiography of your life and experiences past or yet to be. Right, right. Is that, is that sort of the philosophy that drew you into numerology? Is that what? Well, I think what, what drew me into numerology was probably started when I was young because I was uh, fascinated with biographies. I used to read them nonstop. And somewhere in all of that, I was trying to figure out, well, how do you get from being born to perhaps, you know, your destiny, whether that is to be a scientist, a philosopher, a writer, or something like that. So I was fascinated with that at first, and then I found Juno Jordan's book. And what Juno Jordan, she's one of the most premier numerologists, one of the most recognized ones, one with probably the greatest body of experience with numerology. 
her book really kind of gave me the answers of how you get from being born to more or less achieving your destiny, yes. Uh, how old were you when, when? I was about 11 years old. Mm. Have you gone back and looked at your numerology chart to see if when you were 11, if that, that was significant for you well, discovering numerology? It, 11 is a number that represents um, quite often revelations and awareness, enlightenment. Is, is that, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but is that why everyone's always like 11, 11, 11, or oh, 11, yeah. 11 on the clock? I gotta, yeah. ooh, you know, say it's a prayer. A, or, it's know. quite a significant, it's a master number in numerology. It's a significant number. Yeah. So I was 11 at the time. So it makes sense that that would be a time when I might discover something that really was a key element to my destiny. Yeah. So Allison, explain the connection that you found between numerology and the paranormal. Okay. Well, after doing thousands of readings, you know, and hearing the stories of my clients, first off, I'm seeing it being demonstrated in their lives. But if you understand the language of numerology when you actually study it, words like clairvoyant, psychic, medium, uh, prophecy, um, prophetic dreams, all that language is in the, in the numbers. So it began to be put two and two together that you have this psychic energy that's represented in the numbers and then you have clients that actually have the psychic energy that are having experiences, which in many ways explains why. And I do believe that all of us are psychic to a certain extent, but some of us are more psychic than others and also there are people that it's actually written for their destiny to experience this sort of thing. This is what they're here to do. So you have that aspect of it. But then I started watching paranormal uh, television shows and noticing addresses and seeing the same number pop up there. So now I've got another aha moment. So I start doing research on the most haunted houses and then looking at numbers and looking for patterns. And that's one thing that a numerolog numerologist does is look for patterns in the numbers and patterns. And so you're seeing all these same numbers show up with haunted houses. And what's the address of, uh, of Farmer's Hope Inn? Here? Farmer's Hope Inn is a 3180. When you add that together, it's a 3. You also take the street Lebanon Road, which is an 11. Even the zip code here is a 22. And if you even take Route 72, that's a 9. If we're looking at the language of numerology, 3 represents psychic mediumship, okay? Prophetic dreams, that's where that language comes in. Nine very often are, are psychics, uh, spiritual teachers. Uh, we can take a look at, let's say, um, James Von Prague, mm -hmm. Lisa Williams, John Holland. They're all nines. Uh, Sylvia Brown, psychic medium, she's a three. Okay, so it's not just the building, but it's also in people. Um, and so this, this particular building has three elements attached to it, a three, uh, an 11, and a 22, and all of that is very paranormal activity. My, I live at 325 Buckaloo Avenue. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I have a three. Yeah. And it's actually 511, Route 511 is the... Yeah. And three. usually when 11 show up, yeah. like if we, we bring in a few examples, like Amney, Amneyville Horror, right. 112, okay, you have, when the 11 is just even in the first two numbers of something, uh, quite often that place is haunted. Another example would be... Um, the Conglier House, which is one of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania, its address is 1129. So you basically got an 11, and then if you add the 2 and the 9, you got another 11. So you see this coming up in, in, in so many haunted places. So in numerology, like I said, 3, psychic mediumship, clairvoyance, seeing. You have um, the 7, which is usually the mystic, the seer, and somebody that's quite psychic. I'm a 7 life path. An example of another seven would be um, Dan Aykroyd. He um, is very much interested in spiritual philosophy. He um, does a lot of research on UFOs, which is right up the ballpark of his energy. I'm sure he's had his fair. And just think about Ghostbusters. I mean, he's yeah. in the perfect movie. So, so you know, there's people all the time are demonstrating this. Um, another number is nine. Spiritual, like I say, psychic and mediumship comes in with that number. Master numbers 11 and 22, very often psychic mediumship experiences come in with those numbers. So it's really I got the first first time I got married. I'm now divorced, but I got married on 11:22. Gee, <laughs> didn't work anyway. Okay. <laughs> now, there. Explain the um, uh, uh, like the different rooms here, because they all have a different energy. Sure. So, um, what are some of the rooms here that? Uh, My understanding, of course, one it has to assume that the room number that they they have at this time 
is it, it, what it's always been. I, you know, I, yeah, okay. okay. But I do know that, that Terry told me one in seven are the most activity. Um, I do know that the seven uh, off time shows up with paranormal activity. Okay, as far as the one goes, I'd have to kind of look at the history of that room. Maybe there's something else causing it there. But I do want to point out one thing. If you just look at who's on television right now, doing all these paranormal shows. Let's look at Zach Baggins yeah. on Ghost Adventures. Yeah. Love that show. Major three energy. Could this be the EVP? <laughs> I love that. Let me play it back dude, three times. Okay, dude, 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 okay. Dude. One more dude, okay. <laughs> but anyhow, Zach has got major three energy. His yeah. whole experience, the whole reason he went for it was because he saw a ghost and it yeah. just drove him crazy. So now he goes on this quest. Let's go to Ghost Hunters. You've got Grant and Jason. Mm -hmm. Hello, three energy. 11 energy sitting there between the two of those guys in a major position. Yeah. The reason why those guys are doing it has a lot to do with perhaps their own experiences. David Schrader is often a guest on um, Ghost Adventures as he was a judge on one of their programs. I've actually done some radio shows with David and David's got some major 22 energy and I asked him one time, I said, David, I said, the reason why you're into all of this is you've had your own experiences, and I've got to believe that they were on a more sinister sort of a experience. And he goes, how do you know that? And I'm going, because of your 22. And he's like, oh, my God. So you've got David Schrader that, again, is interested in all of this stuff. He has a darkness radio, a whole program devoted to it. He has that energy. So this is what I'm saying. And, and if we look at who's in this, in this building, well, our lovely um, owner, Terry, has major three energy. Last night, when you had the people that, Jamie is an 11 life path. I don't really know what um, Mich Michelle. Michelle's was, but I know that Jamie's an 11 life path. Of course she has uh, that connection to bring through information. Um, Terry, of course, I think she kind of pulls it in a little bit because of her energy. So it's not so much, it's yes, you have a combination of the building. If you've got a building that has a potential to pull in that paranormal experience or pull in the spirits, but you also have people living in, because like draws like. Usually we end up living in a house that's in alignment with our energy. And you have people sitting in here that have ability to see or to experience these things. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. So you, then if you were to look at the, the numerology uh, of the the ghosts uh, or the, the the residual spirits or whatever uh -huh. would you f would you be surprised to find that they had uh threes or, or or certain numbers because are those the people that come back as ghosts well, or does that i don't have anything think no do i don't think that's why you come back as a ghost okay i do think that um or never leave as a ghost, yeah, never right? leave as were, yeah. uh, what's interesting is she did give me the name of stanley they gave, she yeah. gave me his date of birth and he had a 29 birthday which is an 11 but 29 often in a person's life can really create um, almost tragic, tragic experiences sometimes. Um, but I personally don't know if because of your numbers you come back as a ghost. I think you make that decision because maybe you're afraid to move on. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some things that are left unfinished. I mean, I'd have to go to heaven and ask somebody really to know the answer to that. Now, at, at the end of each uh, uh, episode, we like to ask our guests. Right. Um, it's the title of the show, What Matters Most. When, when you leave this place what's the what's the imprint that you want to leave besides your numbers I think for me you know this whole experience is just being really grateful for the opportunity to talk about something that I'm passionate about and something that I know can really help people on so many levels and for me overall in life what matters most is, is just um, using what I know to to love to show the love that I have in my heart and the joy that I have in my heart and, and using numerology to help people. And to me, that's what matters the most because that's what brings me my greatest joy. So. Allison, it's been a pleasure. Thank Let you for enlightening me. And now I know that one plus one doesn't just equal two. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're outside with uh, Barb McCarthy Spade from Edge of Darkness Paranormal, uh, the paranormal investigators out of Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, you've had a lot of experience here, huh? I did. I right. love Farmer's Hope Inn. Right. It's like, I call it the paranormal playground for me. Okay, but now before we uh, get into Farmer's Hope, uh, how did you get started in paranormal investigation? Well, I think all my life I kind of had a passion for the paranormal. I can remember being really little and having experiences, hearing things, seeing things. Um, so it just didn't surprise me that 
we live among spirits. Spirits are around us all the time. And paranormal investigation has actually come a long way probably since you were 10. Oh, yes. Uh, and I mean, a lot of us know now from uh, all the TV shows, you know, Zack and the Boys on Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters. Um, but maybe some people actually haven't seen any of this stuff. So what are some right. of the instruments you use to detect uh, other presences? We have a lot of equipment. Yeah. Um, what are some of the major ones that you would um, Melmeter, okay. okay, which measures um, EMF and temperature, mm -hmm. because it's said that if a spirit's manifesting, it'll set off electricity, and that'll record on the EMF detector, and also the temperature will change. A lot of people will say they'll feel like a cold spot, and we can actually see that on our equipment if the temperature drops at the same time somebody's experiencing something, seeing something, hearing something. Um, we have voice recorders that we use um, where we try to do EVP sessions and capture a, a voice, Electronic a disembodied voice, voice phenomena. phenomena right. right. And that's something that when you're doing an investigation, you might hear something with the naked ear, but also sometimes you're doing an EVP session and talking to the spirits, and it, it's not until later that you go back over all those voice recorders, and something you didn't hear in the room with your ear will be on that device, mm. a response to a question at the same time mm -hmm. you asked it. Mm -hmm. um, we have EM pumps, which actually pump right. electricity into the atmosphere because it's it, said that that's what the spirits need to oh, speak, to, to, manifest. To, to, to manifest, it, right. It puts Electric mag electromagnetic energy into the atmosphere. And you also have the, yeah. the ghost box thing? We have a ghost box. Which is? Um, I love to use that device. Uh, that plays over radio frequencies at such a fast, high level that all you hear is static. Um, but if you're trying to speak to a spirit and see if there's any spirits around you, it, it can actually speak over that and you'll capture a voice, which we've done quite often and a lot here too. Yeah, so let's get to Farmer's Hope. Okay. Uh, we're outside. Have you had any experiences here? Yes, actually we had an event that we were doing and we started out here. Um, we had our table set up and um, we had a psychic that was uh, giving there. a lecture over there. And I was sitting in the corner and Michelle Livingston, who is our psychic, she's giving her lecture and mm -hmm. I'm feeling something touch in the back of my head. Now, I'm thinking as a paranormal investigator, we look for all natural explanations yeah, for anything we feel first, right. absolutely. I'm seeing if there's a bug, I'm feeling in my head, there's nothing there. I feel it again. And I kept feeling this and there's nothing there. It went on for about 10 minutes. At the same time, Michelle didn't know what I was, you know, feeling back here. And, and she had said that she could see the little girl Elizabeth peeking through the brush. And she was down there as well. That made me think maybe, because I talk to her all the time when I'm here, maybe she was touching me saying, I, I hear you talking to me and I'm here I'm watching everybody. So that was pretty interesting. Wow. I like it out here. All right, let's go inside and see what okay. you can tell us more about right. what you found. We're back in the bar where we've, we've spent a lot of time over the past <laughs> 24 hours. And uh, so tell us what you've seen in here. Um, actually sitting in that corner table, just having a, a, a lunch meeting about holding an event here. The place was kind of empty. One of the tables, maybe just one, had um, four people sitting at it. This was all empty in here, and me and my friend Eric were facing this way. Eric, a cool name. Yeah, yeah, he's on our team. Cool. I know, it's like a good name. But right where um, my friend Alice is sitting right now, mm -hmm. uh, that chair just moved by itself. Nobody walked past it, not within minutes of that happening. And me and Eric both saw that at the same time. Um, I was sitting here in this bench, and we, we had an investigation here with some guests. And over there above the ATM machine, I saw a big black mass move. I remember letting everybody know, seeing something right away. And my friend Eric was sitting here. I asked them to bring the millimeter over right away so we could see if we could get any readings of an energy of, you know, to validate what I just saw. Um, we didn't at the time. It must have been about 20 minutes later, Eric was sitting there and he shouted out that he saw the same black mass move up the stairs again. That's pretty profound, yeah. And, and as paranormal investigators, we make sure there's no natural explanations for that. It was nothing that could have been a shadow uh -huh. cast from anything else. It was just yeah. a weird shaped black mass. Um, we also, here at the bar, did EVP sessions and ghost box sessions, and we're speaking out and asking if Stanley or John were here, because Stanley's known to like to hang, hang at, at the, the bar, bar and have a drink. 
we were asking if Stanley was here and would like to have a drink. Um, is this Stanley here? And we got a yes. Um, we also got on our voice recorder, which you don't hear with the naked eye. We played it back later. We were asking if Stanley would like to come here and have a drink with us. I went and sat at the bar. Eric's calling out. And on our voice recorder, we got a very clear, I'm dead. Mm. Yes. Chills. So apparently, right. I can't have a drink right now. I'm dead, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, above us, footsteps, heavy footsteps uh -huh. that sounded like boots. Uh, we, we had everybody silent. It's about midnight. Nobody upstairs, no guests sleeping, nobody in their rooms. We made sure of that. And everybody could hear the footsteps. And they were just, there was no mistaking. It wasn't a noise from outside, it was footsteps. Let's go in the basement. Let's go to the basement. Yes, the let's basement. go. Okay. All right. Uh, you go first. <laughs> really? Are yeah. you sure you don't want to go first? <laughs> no. I'll go first. Okay, Come on. You go Eric. first. Come on. You're the paranormal investigator. I'm afraid of uh, nothing, <laughs> unless I see a spider down here. <laughs> here we go. Back here, this room. Right. Okay, in this room down here, um, I remember I, had, I didn't like this room too much. We were holding an event here, um, had a several guests, and we came in this room. And I am claustrophobic, so I keep that in mind, natural explanations for everything we see, hear, and feel. Um, but I felt like uh, there were other people in here with me, but I felt like I was swaying, and like I couldn't breathe, like I had a heaviness on my chest, like I was just absolutely, I had to get out of the room. But now, as I, this is the first time I'm back here since that time, and I'm feeling a little heavy. You can see me breathing yeah. a little heavy right yeah. now. I'm feeling that a little bit in here again. So I'm hoping I it's don't not know. me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Right. Hey, last night I slept in the soldier's room, you and did. I hear you got a story about that. Right? Oh, I sure do. Oh, Let's cool. go. Let's go. Okay, this is the, we're back in the uh, soldier's room where I, I spent the night last night. Okay, did you go sleep well? It. I actually slept, slept really well, and I was expecting to be disturbed, but you know what? I felt safe. I felt, uh, you know, this word kept coming up last night, but nurtured. I mean, I, well, I felt good. really, really comfortable in here. Good. Um, I remember coming in, well, coming up the steps. Um, one of our investigators was coming into this room so I could come in with a group of people and do an EVP session, and he felt something go through him. So he said, Barb, get in here. We had our voice recorder set up on the table. Um, there was actually the chair right here near the bed. And I sat in the chair and had three other people in here with me. And uh, I said, uh, if that was the soldier that affected Kenny, um, can you make some kind of sound to let us know that was you or that you're in here with us? And about five sec seconds later, I heard this huge, it was like a knock. But it was a kind of knock, like right here, that you could feel the knock. I felt it where I was sitting. So I'm looking around. I mean, I'm just sitting on the chair. There's, there's nothing that fell. Even if it did, it was a different kind of noise. To me, that was telling me he was answering me. I asked him for a sign, and it was him. And about 30 seconds later, my sister was actually leaning here against the wall. And she went like this. She felt something push her. So I believe it was nothing bad either. I think it was just him saying, yeah, that was me. I am here. I hear you. I guess this is one of, one of the most active rooms here in, in the inn, So too. I've heard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So yeah. I've heard. Cool. Uh, you, something about Stanley and John, right, in another room? Room number seven. Room seven. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Wow. So here we are in room 11. My mistake. Not seven. Uh, I'm a paranormal investigator, not a numerologist. Not a numerologist. Sorry, but, Eric. you know, I was talking to Allison, there's much significance in the number 11. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I love so that number. I, I'm not surprised that you've had a lot of experiences in this room. Yes. Okay, uh, go ahead. Let's okay. shoot. Um, we did ghost box sessions in here. Um, as you can see, this hole in the wall here, there's, this used to be a stable area, um, and they would feed the horses through here. I guess carrots or whatever. So that's still here, preserved. Um, they found stuff in the wall. 
Um, but we had our ghost box, which is that machine that goes through the radio frequencies, mm -hmm. and all you hear is static, but if you ask out to any of the spirits, they can speak over that, and you'll hear the voices clearly. Uh, what, um, what if I just took this radio and tuned it? I mean, could, no, would it work the same way? No. no. This is a special device. It, it channels through okay. all the radio frequencies it can pick up from the area. Okay. You'll just hear static. So, so what are some of the things you heard then? Um, so we were in here, and we actually thought, well, let's just see who's here and maybe try to talk to John or Stanley or even Charles. Um, and we actually just said to John, like, did you push your little girl down the steps? Was it an accident? Are you sorry for what happened? And amongst all the static, all of a sudden we got a very clear sorry. Um, we asked him, are, are you in heaven or hell? Just to kind of, we kind of asked questions in a different way than to try to tie into everything else that we're hearing. Um, and we heard him say heaven. Um, and then the really profound and kind of funny one, we kept talking out to Stanley, who's known to like to have a drink at the bar. And we asked him, what's your favorite drink? What do you like to drink? And it said beer. And we even asked that repeatedly several times, mixing it in with other questions and we'll come back to that question. What, what was your favorite drink again? And it must have been about six or seven times we got beer. Stanley and I have a lot in common, I see. And I know it's only uh, 1.50 in the afternoon, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. So <laughs> maybe we'll head back to the bar. So uh, Okay. But uh, listen, Barb, it's been absolutely fantastic. You, it has. Yeah, and I, I enjoy I, talking yeah. to you and sharing my stories. I love to talk about the paranormal yeah, well, and Farmer's Hope Inn. This is, I love this place. Cool energy. A lot of energy. I know, really cool energy, too. All right, okay. we're out of here. Farmer's Hope Inn, a place of mysteries solved and unsolved, of fortunes lost and found, of romance told and untold, death and desperation. But most importantly, a place where love never dies, where love is endless, reminding us all, once again, the simple things in life are what matters most. Namaste. Thanks, John. What's up, Stanley? Yeah, me too.